Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time it is for you. I'm Cycle, and this is Let's Play Train Simulator. Let's take our last trip through the Cahoon Pass for at least this second trip through. We're going to have another trip because I've got enough to do here for another uh, run here, plus those two career scenarios with the uh, F7. But for right now, we're going to finish off the main series of the SD42, SD40 Type 2. Uh, locomotives uh, on our later on our second run our third run I should say on our third run we're gonna get another ES44 AC and another SD40 scenario because they are there are a couple of workshop ones in here but for right now we're gonna finish the last official scenario of the SD40s which is the full up scenario and it sounds like we're gonna start by fueling the uh, train at the yard so let's uh, see what we gotta do in this scenario this is gonna be uh, apparently an 80 minute scenario Let's see how long this actually takes, shall we? Let's get into the scenario. Let's have some fun. This locomotive is low on fuel. Set your path to fill up from the pump located on Barstow Fuel Siding 1. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do some saving along the way on this, and you're going to understand why in a moment. I actually um, just tried playing this scenario, and for some reason I found that my train decided to release the cars I had to drop off as I was going. So needless to say, with a scenario of this length of driving in the yard, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I save my progress before I actually exit the yard while I'm not moving. That way I can just pick up from exiting the yard. So I've, I've learned my lesson, save before I leave the yard after a long journey of yard. <laughs> I have learned my lesson. So we're going to go ahead and do our fuel load up here. So literally what happened when I did the uh, scenario the cars, those are the cars for the train that I'm picking up right over there. But the back cars decided they didn't want to stay on the train and the back cars have to be dropped off at Oro Grand. So when I look at the information here, you're gonna see that Oro Grand is set up to drop off eight cars. When I was trying to figure out what cars they were on my train, none of them were on my train. And I realized as I looked down the track, oh, they're back in the middle of the track. That's why I can't drop them off. And of course, I can't go back and get them and the scenario has failed. So, you have to be very, very careful, especially on American route, because American routes tend to be the ones that do it the most. Uh, sometimes the cars you need are going to just excuse themselves from the train without your authorization. So the, these box cars that you see right now, I had seven of these, and then three box cars on the back, and everything behind it fell off, and they were sta they stayed on the track. It's amazing that the box cars, the same box cars, that's not the box cars. It's amazing that, see, that the same style of boxcars that were a problem for me on Sherman Hill are the boxcars that cause the same problem now. I don't understand. I do not understand. Um, couldn't, I don't know what's going on with that. The same kind of boxcar. Exactly the same kind of boxcar. Don't stop yet. We need fuel. So if we look at this, you're going to see that I have 400 gallons of fuel, 399 to be exact now. Fill her up. Lovely gas noises. And back to the main hood. So yeah, the box head, so I can literally say that the seven cars I had were these guys right here. Five, six, Seven. This was the last car on my train when I got to Oro Grand. So everything back here, this just decided to uncouple, and everything back here was left behind. The eight cars I need to drop off at Oro Grand are these last eight on the train. These last eight. So if you lose any of these along the way, if these cars decide they want to uncouple themselves along the way, and these cars get left behind, you fail the scenario, you're starting it over. So yeah, I'm going to, I've learned my lesson on saving. <laughs> this train does not give you a warning on a PCS trip like the other trains, so there's nothing you can really do about it. You have to just keep an eye on the length of your train and hope that uh, nothing happens along the way. I'm going to have to review the video and see when that happened, so I can actually uh, indicate that the uh, problem appears to be the same boxcars. All full up and ready to go. A mixed freight train with, yeah, yeah. Barstow East Yard 13. Turn on the wipers because the rain is temperamental in this scenario.
Now the switch is, because I already started playing the scenario, not wrong move, because I already started playing the scenario, the switches might be set in many cases already, so I'm just going to have to make sure the switches I need are properly set. It looks like right now they are not. If I do this, I'm going to eventually need to do that. I'm going to check all the switches along here because I'm going to need them eventually. So at some point I need to move this along the outer track. Uh, that will then take me over to here and over to here, and that is where I'm going to eventually go, and everything should be fine from there. But I'm not worried about any of that right now. I need to get back to where I am right now. Make sure I'm not speeding first of all, which I'm not. I'm going to keep going until I see the orange trap coming into the hub. That's going to be the indication that I need to get ready to start slowing down. So I'm going to watch for my point to uh, hit the brakes at that point. No point intended. And it's going to be a really long slog over the yard. I apologize for the length of time this is going to take, but it's a long long yard slog what I may do is I may give you a view standing in the rain so you can walk so you can take a look around at the yard traffic as we go by I mean, I could try and give you pictures as I go through the yard, but there's a good chance I'll screw up something if I do that, so I'm not going to try to uh, push my, press my luck on that one. I'm just going to get out to the uh, yard exit, I'm going to stop, I'm going to save my game, and we're going to go ahead and uh, get ourselves going from there. There is no timetable, so I can stop for my game saves and no problems. This time I'm going to have to pay attention to the back of my train, make sure the back of my train is still intact before I arrive. Because if it is not, oh, there's going to be a very angry cyclone. Let's just say the calm before the storm is currently in place. I already had a storm earlier. Don't want to have another one. Anything that keeps me from ha anything that keeps cyclone from having his dinner is not a good thing. You do not want to keep a cyclone from his dinner. Hey, Flippy. I'm going to go ahead and increase the throttle just slightly to make sure I can slow down a little quicker. Then I'll take the brakes off completely. And we're going to go. I'm back on the train. I thought I hit the wrong switch for a second, but no, this was the switch I wanted to hit, so we're good. <laughs> I panicked for a second there. So we are going to take the correct track now. So the uh, correct yard is going to eventually be showing up. Hold on, hold on. Just realized. Check the HUD. Check the HUD. I'm on the wrong yard. Wrong yard. Stop, 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 stop. Stop. Wrong yard. Wrong yard. I did not set this part of the track. I was too busy setting the exit. I did not set the uh, actual thing we needed to go in. So we're going to go in the correct direction now. Let's try that again, shall we? Let's try that again. I'm a little, I'm a little flustered from my uh, strange disconnection of the train earlier, so I'm kind of not playing at the most accurate setting right now. This is indeed where I want to go. I almost messed that up again. This is correct, so that doesn't need to do that. We're good. I need to get beyond this switch right here, and once I'm beyond that switch, I'm good to change it. For rakes again, please. Click on that. Now we're going to the correct yard. That's exactly where I wanted to go. 
Now, once we get back there, note that the uh, train is uh, very close to the front of the yard. So we don't want to just come hightailing our way into there. We need to come in gently or we may crash into our train. By the way, the road we're going to be passing under here is North 1st Avenue, I believe. North 1st Avenue. Before we take off, I actually want to investigate something while we're in this area. Or maybe I'll do it as we take off. We'll see. I already cut myself down to 12 to help me with backing into my train. So the yard is back there, I don't give a uh, behind about. And we're going to hit brakes. Mucho brequito at this point. So we're going to hop over to here. We're going to watch the uh, train come in. Hide the HUD because it looks a lot better. Especially if I'm about to crash. We are connected. Continue through Barstow Yard. Roger, check, check, left, center, go. And let's just pray that everything behind us on this train stays connected this time. Those boxcars, they are a pain in the beep. That's all I can say about that. While we're looking around the area, let's do the examination I want to do. Because next to the uh, track over here, there should be a diner, I imagine. That diner, somewhere in this area over here. But no, we have a uh, grass covered road instead. So maybe it wasn't here at the time that uh, the route was modeled. Somewhere in this area is now a Mucho Burrito. Mucho Burrito is now in this area. So that's the diner I was looking for. I didn't see a diner, so I guess we don't really have a diner in here. Our train is gonna continue along, coming to this area. Let's get in the cab and turn the wipers off for a moment because there's nothing on our uh, windscreen. Can't say I like the positioning of the wipers here. How did that stay above 15? How did that stay above 15? That was a weird little jump there, and I don't know why it did that. So I'm just, just going to chalk that one up to the game. That happened on the last run, too. This area seems to have a problem with speeding. I don't know what it is. Very strange. So naturally, all the uh, switches coming out should be correct. We are good all the way into our blue pa or our path through the orange yard. We're going to get into the outer siding here, a Barstow Yard 11. We're going to West Yard 11. We're going to follow that path. We're going to come all the way out here. We're going to eventually get to the point where we see on the map Barstow West Exit 2. I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to come up to the green signal and I'm going to stop. At that point, I'm going to do a game save because I want to make sure I don't lose my... Uh, I don't, want to make sure I don't have to go through the yard again. So this run through the yard you are going to see on the video, that is not going to change. This run through the yard is the one you're going to see. But I, want, I will make sure we get a run that does not cause the cars to detach from the uh, back of the train for the actual uh, run you see later on for the rest of it. I 
I still don't know why my train detached on the previous run. I really don't. I'm down to 10 for some reason. So let's get back up to 15. So there is a mixed container freight over there going by. there for a second. And we're going to chop it off. So we're now coming up on the Barstow Yard outer track. As you near the exit, set the path through the yard so you leave from Barstow West Exit 2. Already done! I'm efficient, I check my list, and I do what I need to. So, already done! on the back of our train this time. I'm going to try not to do too much goofing off in case something I did causes those train cars to not behave. I really wish I knew why those cars always detach. I wish I knew. I wish I could tell you. scenario of the day. Very sleepy speed. At this point, it's now my uh, second run of, the third, of my fifth scenario of the day. The other ones didn't need two runs, so I'm a little uh, annoyed at this point. Because all that good commentary is now down the tubes. Down the toilet, flushed. I'm just going to let you enjoy this uh, exit because there's not much to really talk about right now. There really isn't. Uh, what I will do is I will take the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what I'm planning to do with the channel here. Obviously, this is now my second run through Castle Rock, or through, um, sorry, I said Castle Rock. My second run through uh, Cahun Pass. I am going to be going back to Castle Rock Railroad to look at the F7. I'm going to come back to Cahun Pass to do the F7 scenarios here as well. And when I come back to Cahun Pass, I will look through those two workshop scenarios in between the F7 scenarios that we have on the career tab. So we are going to be getting all four of those scenarios that are, st that are still listed in my game. Two of them, however, are workshop scenarios. I am going to see if I can make a point of telling you who those who uh, made those as well. There's not too many creators of workshop scenarios for Cahoon Pass, and I want to see if I can, um, first of all, play those scenarios, and second of all, uh, without too many changes. And if I can make changes, I'll let you know what I do, obviously. But provided I can play them, I will tell you who made them and uh, what they are. The very big question with the uh, U.S. scenarios 
Can I play them? The answer to the question lies in, does this have BNSF in it? If so, I might not be able to play it. There's your answer. And those are the cases where I'll have to edit the scenarios and actually uh, remove the uh, BNSF in favor of something that I do have. In which case, I can then play it. So we'll see what we'll see what they are when we get to them. I'm not in a hurry to do those right now because I have a lot to do. So of, of the other things I'm thinking of doing, I have been looking at South Wales Coastal, and I really do want to get there because I have a lot of scenarios for that route. I have several trains I need to introduce before I introduce the AP counterparts for them, uh, for whatever I might use those trains for on those routes, or rather on other routes. However, with that said, I also know that um, there are a lot, why am I speeding? I also know that there are a lot of, um, I actually wasn't speeding, but I caught myself before I did. So I also know there are a lot of other routes I need to look at for their own specific reasons as well. For example, I need to look at Great Western Main Line, another old uh, route that came with this route in the original train simulator uh, installation. So it was one of the original routes as well, East, the Great Western Main Line. So it was the East Coast Main Line actually from York to, uh, New, was it Newcastle? York to Newcastle, I think, the East Coast Main Line. So that was, um, so I definitely have to get to the Great Western Main Line at some point. That's the route I have to explore because that is part of the Western Main Lines. And uh, so, but so is South Wales Coastal. So those are two that I have to consider for that reason. However, rather than staying on one singular long stretch of track, I think it might be sense for me to split it out and do some other things as well. So I'm actually looking at doing Portsmouth Direct Line. There is a secondary reason for doing Portsmouth Direct Line that I have. And that reason is a very simple one. There is a custom route, I'm not gonna spoil it yet, but there is a custom route, a, a handmade route, a very good one too, from what I understand, that um, has been created, that has a lot of scenarios for it, mostly made by one person. If you know what I'm, if you know a route like that, you might know what the route is already. But um, I'm looking at putting this custom route on here. Now, because the default scenarios that come with that route it's a freeware route, by the way. Because the default scenarios that come with that route use trains from the supply, from the required routes, so Portsmouth Direct Line and others, uh, because of that, I've decided it makes sense to introduce those required routes before, and, and the basically the trains on those required routes, which basically means introducing those routes, most likely, before I actually go to play the scenarios that come with the custom route. So I'm going to, uh, I've likely added the old version of Portsmouth Direct Line first. The new one can wait because it's going to have a better train and I'm going to be able to show you the upgraded version of the train and so on. But I also know Portsmouth Direct Line has a couple of interesting items in it that might also be used in these other scenarios. One of those is a Guildford uh, Class 37, a Guildford style Class 37, a red Class 37. That originally I don't know if it came with the route, but it definitely does now. It, it shows up in the Guildford folder, folder. It's separate from the route itself. And uh, you can actually pick up that train with the um, Portsmouth Direct Line. I think the train did come with the original Guildford route when the Guildford route was a payware or maybe a very freeware DLC on Steam. But it's no longer on Steam. You can't get it anymore. So that's out of the question. You can still get the route on UKTS, but the train doesn't come with it, obviously. I don't believe. So, um... The train has been relocated over to the Portsmouth Direct Line. There is actually a scenario on the Portsmouth Direct Line using that train. Uh, and maybe that was always there because, again, it shows up in the manual. So maybe that was always there. But so it was one of two ways to get that train. And since the train stayed in there, uh, we didn't have, they didn't have to worry about uh, taking the train away on the other route. So that's one of the few Class 37s we still have on scene outside of going to Armstrong Powerhouse. The other one, of course, that I know of is Subtle to Carlisle, and I think that's really the only other one. Those two seem to be the two that still exist on Steam. The rest have been removed. The old Class 37 pack, gone. Replace it with the Armstrong packs because they're the ones that uh, everyone prefers now, even over the other Steam-related ones. So, um, but nonetheless, because that red Class 37 shows up in a, uh, in a with the Portsmouth Direct line, that could show up on this custom route as well. So if it does, I have to be ready to drive that train. There's also a Black 7. 
I'm not going to be doing the Black 7 on this run because on the first run of Force Mode, I'm going to do that in two runs for the original scenarios, just like I did with Kahun, which is going to have a third run now. So I'm going to do the same thing with Force Mode Direct Line. I'm going to split it into two parts, and I'm going to do the Black 7 on the second part because what I actually want to do when I introduce Steam, I actually want to go to a US route and introduce Steam on the US route. I just hope that I don't have these stupid box cars on one of the scenarios screwing me up again. That's what I'm kind of hopeful for. <laughs> so we're going to try to uh, not have any problems with that. So yeah, Portsmouth Trek Line is one of the main things I'm considering. I also know the Bergen Line was recently completed. That's a workshop route that's been in progress for about seven years and change. And it is only now finally in its final form. Uh, there's only one scenario on the workshop at last check, but I definitely do have the inclination to check that scenario out. I expect it will be a great route. I expect it will be a great scenario, and I it's an end-to-end -end scenario, and I expect there's going to be other scenarios created for the route because there's a lot of things you can do on that route, the Bergen Line in New York. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that route and checking that out at some point. But I also want to make sure I'm able to do the route justice and I'm not laying all over the place and causing problems with uh, my driving. So I want to make sure that I can um, actually run the route as well. My main concern is running the route. I may have to put it down to medium quality, which may cause some things to not look right. And I'm trying to avoid having to do that because I want to see the route as it was meant to be seen. So we're going to see how that works out. Mile marker three. We've gone three miles at our 15 mile per hour speed limit. Congratulations us. So we're coming to the end of this segment right now. We're gonna eventually be able to uh, pick up uh, and get up to 15 miles per hour. But as I said, I'm gonna save before we get onto the main track, which means I'm gonna hit the brakes before the signal. Ah, nuts. I'm not sure they'll get too fussy on us for one mile over the limit like that, but it's still messy to go over the limit like that. I should have been using the bell the whole time, by the way. <laughs> I'm a little frazzled from the previous run and disconnecting. I'm not even doing proper etiquette this time. I mean, if the, if the scenario is going to screw up and do something it shouldn't do as I'm driving along, you know what? It's not realistic anyway. <laughs> so we're going to be set for our exit here. This is not this uh, crossover track we're not going to be taking. So you can see that uh, this line was not set up. We don't want to take that line. And there's Barstow West exit two, and our lit, our line is blue right up to the signal. I've changed my mind. I'm going to let myself get up, to get on the main line and just finish entering the main line and then I'll save as I get to the main line. Leaving the yard behind you, your next stop is over Grand Sign 10 where the last eight wagons must be delivered, provided they don't disconnect from the train along the way like they did the first time. That would be the uh, caveat of that.
So let me talk about one thing in my future plans. Portsmouth Direct Line is one of the things I'm looking at. I'm also looking at the Bristol Dexter route because it is an old route, and there is a much newer version of the route that is out as part of Southwestern Main Lines to Reading. So I do want to kind of cover that as well. So we're going to try and cover all that. Uh, very long route there, and I want to get the uh, original scenarios on that route and some other ones I have out of the way too. I'm going to stop for the screen after all. We're going to hope this signal doesn't screw with us later like the uh, London to Brighton one does. So I'm going to hit the brakes here. Not there. There's also the point where the green is filling up the right side of our window. That, that's where I'm going to want to hit the uh, brakes to stop so we can pick up from here in case there's a problem. It's not conventional to do this as part of this scenario run, but I want to set up the same point where I'm not moving, and that's the idea here. As long as I'm not moving, we're not going to have a problem. So here's my save point right here. This is the save point. So I'm going to hit the brakes right there. I don't know why I was going in the wrong direction, so I'm going to go ahead and go forward again just to reset it. And I'm going to hit the brakes and stay on it. Good. Here's my save. I'll see you on the other side of it. All right. That is done. Let's get ourselves on the road. Even though I did set my uh, save point uh, for that point where we're getting out of the yard, we still have another signal to pass to actually leave the yard. That is our official yard exit. So we've only got two signals. I saved before the first of two signals before we actually exit. The reason I saved before the first signal is so that if we end up uh, in a situation where we have to reload in the scenario, the tracks don't possibly do things under our train. And that can cause problems with uh, derailments if the uh, track if the tracks get changed under our train being on the track. So um, that's why I saved up the first signal because the support points beyond that are manually controlled, and the manual settings should be saved. So that's why I went ahead and saved at that exact point. going to raise our speed up to 15 again. We're on a bit of an uphill right now, which is a little bit of a challenge, but we are coming to a level gradient now. That's going to eventually, as the rest of our train comes off the hill, it's going to allow us to uh, gain speed a lot more easily to the 55. Right now we're kind of coasting into a 15, even though part of our train is still on a hill, but we are losing a little bit of speed now. truck over there in the distance. Hello, American Truck Simulator. If only those two games were merged. The engine couldn't handle it. <laughs> the engine couldn't handle them being merged. You can't handle a merge! Hmm. Excuse me. I'm tempted to just rip it right now and uh, go right up to uh, 55 like I don't give a flying care, but we have a 30 available now, so I'm going to speed up to 30. Rip it and rip it. So we have 26 cars on our train today and three engines. We have we should remember that as our little tidbit of information in the event that any car is disconnected from the train. But then know if the train is not that long that we lost something and we need to go back and redo it. 
That's how that will work. Oh, 55 is now our limit, so off we go. Now you notice that the car we only have to drop off cars once, so once we actually get those eight cars dropped off, whatever the box cars want to do, we don't care at that point. We can lose those box cars, we can lose the entire train, and we just have to stop at the last stop and we're done. So we just have to make sure those eight cars get to their destination and we're good to go. Of course, we're going to try and be realistic and not leave a mess on the track. That would be ideal. So periodically, I'm going to go and come to the back of the train. I'm going to check and make sure that 302160 is our last car here. As long as 302160 is our last car, we are good to go. What is inside these things? We can't find out, can we? Nope. Not gonna let us find out. Rain is starting again, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna throw you out on the front of the train. Now you may be wondering what exactly this view is that is on the front of the train. I'm gonna show you. Make sure our speed isn't speeding. Cut that down for a moment. Let's make sure we got control of our speed before I try to show you this. Got put one more notch, and that should do the job. So we're gonna hold a 52 for a moment. But let's show you what this front of the train view is. You notice we go up and down. I can't look to the left, but I am allowed to look to the right. There's our Union Pacific. That tells you where we are. We're on the front of the train, and there is the door over there that we uh, came out of to get to the front of the train. So. That's how you get up here. You come up the stairs, you come in the come in the cab, and you go. Okay, let's get to 55 now. So I hint that the train is the correct length also for the purpose of our train. Let's look at the back of the train again just to confirm. There is the car that I just talked about earlier. Same one. So as long as uh, that is the last car of the train, we can look at the uh, information on the HUD. We can see that the red engine is below where it currently says 25%, and that, of course, changes with the throttle. So we can see the red engine is below that. That is our engine. As long as the train goes to the point that the red engine is under that number, we have a full train. So if I look down at any point, I notice that the uh, engine is not under that point. I'm going to know that we lost part of our train. I'm going to have to see if we can somehow go back and get it. If we can't, then we're kind of screwed. too concerned about necessarily going the full 55 here. I'm going to go ahead and just keep it a few miles under that because between 52 and 55 it's not that much of a difference. Yeah, in the span of an hour you go three miles less, so it'll take you slightly longer. But uh, in the, uh, it's really negligible in the end. You're going to take an extra minute. Big deal. An extra minute. Whippy skip. This is not a speed run. We're not too concerned. So we should have green signals all the way here. We should be good to go at this point for a while. We've gone ahead and eased the uh, throttle back to a level 2 throttle, as you may have heard. That level 2 throttle is going to allow me to slowly gain speed until I drop back to a level 1, at which point I should start slowly losing speed again, if not sooner.
And I have just started, I think, losing speed again, because I thought I went to 54.9 for a moment there. In fact, I am indeed losing speed again. So that worked out perfectly for me. I could have gone slightly above 55 a little bit fine, but that worked out perfectly, because now we know where our um, range is. about a two-mile range where we keep gaining speed, then we start going down again. So that's good to know. Very good information. That might have just been something hill related because we're going up again. Anyway, we are currently heading towards Oro Grand Sign 10. We are 21 miles, well, a little less than 22 miles from our from our first stop, I should say. And now I'm going to drop the throttle by a notch there. That should allow me to uh, slowly lose a little bit of speed. If I put it back to a level 25% right now, now I'm going to gain speed again. So I'm kind of in the butter zone right now. I'm going to go ahead and just let the uh, throttle live on notch 1 for a little while, and we're going to move it back up to notch 2 when we get a little further down. I'm just going to have to keep adjusting as we go, and hopefully we don't lose our train. see any whistleboards for any of these crossings so I'm just going to go ahead and do and uh, just do a horn as I cross them. It's not realistic but at the same time you know we should have whistleboards. Back up to level 3 throttle for a moment because we're a little too far down the uh, speed here. We do have our green over red so that is again proceed at line speed which we're not quite at line speed, but we're getting there. And I'm really getting speed at a good clip now, so I need to cut that off by one notch. I'm now going 54 miles per hour. Our speed limit remains 55 miles per hour. We are now 20 miles exactly from our stop. There's not a lot of really major roads here. A few, like there's a few I could name out as we cross and provide I have a map on hand. <laughs> but other than that, there's not really too much to really discuss here. This is just a uh, drive through a fairly featureless landscape. And you get to uh, live in the excitement of, is this train gonna stay on? The answer to the question is yes, my train is gonna stay on because it's not gonna try and do the same thing to me twice. I know it won't. It would not do that to me. An update on the back of our train. There it is. In fact, let's put, keep the view on it just like that. That way we know it's good. I seem to be losing speed now at, at a level 2 throttle, so I'm going to bump it back up to a level 3 throttle and regain speed if I can. So this can take a moment for the, uh, nope, it's actually a bit of an uphill gradient, so I'm going to have to go to level 4 throttle. Here we go. 
Another new train coming along. There it is. Let's take a moment to, look, to admire the F5 HUD, shall we? There's the F5 HUD. So the train brake is on 0% release. There you go. That's another way to come out of your uh, speed and everything else on your train. It probably would be more useful with a steam engine than with this format because you can see the numbers up there with a much better view of the HUD, but it's a lot harder to keep track of the numbers. I kind of wish the text was a little bigger in the corner up there so that we could see a little bit more of it and I not have to strain my eyes. Like I'm squinting to read the 53.789 and such right now. I'm squinting to read that. So that's kind of uh, not fun. So let's bring this back up, shall we? Let's hide that and bring this back up. Just went under 17 miles to go to our stop. Our train still appears to be whole and intact. I'm gonna drop a notch on my throttle right now, and I'm gonna drop a second notch on my throttle right now because I'm getting close to speed. And I'm about to speed up. I'm gonna go to zero. Let's zero it. There we go, that's what I want to see because we're on a downhill right now. We're kind of flitter we're kind of flirting with uh, what number we want to do right now. It's just moved up into the six. Back to five. Back to four. So we are Finally settling in on a uh, locale here to keep the uh, number going down now. We have a green signal. Proceeding at line speed. I am going to keep a close eye, like I said earlier, on that HUD just in case something goes wrong with my train. And it decides it doesn't want to stay attached to me anymore because, you know, trains do that sometimes. Stop back on the front of the train, just take a look around out here. Beautiful, beautiful, we got a chain there. Uh, you have to leave, you can move that chain to actually step down if the train's not moving, but obviously with the train moving, you're not gonna do that. What's our train number? 3733. Thank you for joining me here on train 3733 today. I hope you're having a uh, wonderful ride along with me here. I hope uh, that you're finding this to be a very entertaining journey. as we're standing out here on the front of the cab for a moment. Now normally I would hide the HUD for, mo for a moment while I show, while I stay on this to give you some pictures, but I absolutely right now have to keep an eye on my train. Because if I see the uh, train suddenly shrink, then I know that I have to actually come to a quick and immediate halt in reverse to pick it up. And since there's no engine involved beyond the uh, one that I think is beyond the two that are behind my train, as long as it's not the entire train detaching, I can go back and I can pick it up. I'm going to avoid hitting the brakes for a little while to see if I can help with that as well. But at some point I'm going to have to hit the brakes anyway to get down to 15 for the siding. It does not show on the HUD, but you are going to have to get down to 15 to end of the sidings. 
So when you see that yellow, you want to start slowing down and you want to, again, keep an eye on that train because when it, as the picture enlarges, that engine is going to move as to where it's located. You may even want to just keep an eye on the back of your train at that point. Make sure the back of your train is in good shape. So we're uh, coming up on another green signal. This green signal is about uh, 13 and a tenth or so, 13.2 miles or so away from your stop. So that green signal is that distance away. We've gone back to a level three throttle to see if I can get our speed back up to close to 55 again. One of the reasons I'm kind of staying out here and showing you this right now is because of all the uh, closed rocks that we uh, go through, the rocky area that we go through. There actually is a name for this area. I forget what it is, but there is actually some kind of a name for this area. I kind of alluded to it in one of my uh, first set of videos with the ES44 AC, so you can go back and grab the name from one of those videos. I also just want to remind you again, while we're going through this lovely portion of our journey, make sure you do like the video, subscribe to the channel to see more like this. Uh, again, I would normally show you these screenshots like this, but because I have to keep an eye on the train, I have to uh, keep this up right now. And if you may not have noticed, I gave you a quick chance to get a screenshot there. to a level one throttle for a moment. Maintain some amperage. Now I know that I'm making a lot of comments about uh, how I want to keep an eye on my train, make sure that it stays together. And you might be thinking, you might be even trying to say to me, um, Cyclone, doesn't the PCS trip to tell you when part of your train rips away? The answer to that question is yes on a newer model. This model does not tell you that. Uh, if it did, I would have found it on my last run. So it did not tell me anything about the uh, train ripping apart. There was no indication that part of the train ripped off. I couldn't do anything to go back again until it was too late. At that point, you failed a scenario. So, like I said, I apologize for being overzealous about wanting to keep an eye on the train this time. I am keeping an eye on the train this time. I was hoping to go over more about the route with you on this run, but I really can't afford to, unfortunately. You see we do have a green over red, so we can still proceed at line speed. We are now uh, coming to 10 and 3 quarters of a mile away from our stop. You can see a side track starting on the right over there. That is one of the Helen Helendale sidings. I believe it's called Helendale. You can see a couple of passing loops coming along here. The siding enters on the right to one of those loops. And there are some cars in one of the loops here. They're not labeled. So it's just some kind of a loose consist in this area over here. siding over there also ends, so it's not even a passing siding, it literally is just a siding to back something into and pick it up later. for a moment. Let's check the end of our train. There it is.
bump it up to a level four throttle for a moment there. You may have just heard. speed limit so you know what it works this should still be a green signal coming up So we're going to see maybe another signal and then we're going to have a much closer signal as we get to the siding. So we're in a longer signal block right now. But after this uh, signal, we're going to come to another signal in very short order after that. That second signal will tell us that we should be entering the sidings. The, truck, the train did a little bit of a bounce. As it did, I checked the back of our train. The back of the train still seems to be intact. In fact, there it is. curious what caused the I'm gonna have to review the video but I'm still curious what caused the train to detach before I don't know what caused it see the crossing I will do the whistle but I can't guarantee they're going to be accurate. <laughs> Increase throttle just slightly. I'm not going to worry about increasing too much after that. Uh, after this little increase to 55 right now I'm going to just let the speed go down naturally on its own. I'm not going to worry too much about increasing at that point. This will be our last real increase for the current period here. We are now coming down to six miles to go to our stop at Oro Grand Siding 10. We don't have to check any switches, we just go enter the siding and then we uh, leave when we're done. So there's nothing really to do at the siding. We're going to leave a level one throttle application on right now, just in case it can be helpful for maintaining speed. But other than that, I'm just going to let the speed go down naturally now because we're going to get a signal soon to enter the siding anyway. Not this one, coming up, the next one after that. So the signal 1.4 miles from now will be a green signal, I'm fairly certain. Still looking fantastic here. Coming up on four and three quarter miles to go to our stop. Let's go 
back to the front of our, even though it's going to be a little bit in the rain here, let's go back to the front of the train for a moment. signal but we know I know that the next one is probably going to be a yellow because we need to get a warning on the next signal to enter the yard so there are two more signals minimum coming here the next one has to be about two miles out so I suspect we're going to see that very shortly coming into the hunt there it is so a little over two miles out, it looks like, because that's going to be about 2.4 miles away from the uh, point where we enter the yard. Or where we have to stop anyway. You may have noticed that I'm just allowing my speed to decrease now, as long, so the map will eventually zoom in at some point. I'm going to go ahead and maintain a little bit of speed here, though I don't need to decrease too much at this point. But as I go to slow down to make, to make my stop, I will keep an eye on the back of the train and make sure that it all stays attached. That way when I get down to 15, I can just keep going without having to think. I'll have a new uh, checkpoint at that point on the HUD as well. That's gonna be good enough for our speed increase right now. Don't need to do too much more. One more quick check at the back of the train. Still there. We're back in the engine now. Or in the cab, rather. over the cab. You can see if there were an actual camera set up in the cab, it probably would be looking over the nose there. So there is the yellow. I'm going to go ahead and take the throttle off. I'm going to let the uh, speed decelerate a little bit on its own. When the next signal comes into uh, view, I'm going to go ahead and apply a brake application at that point. now at a point two miles out from our stop. So slowing down again is now absolutely necessary. But we're going to go ahead and do it gently so that we don't cause anything to fall off the back of our train because for some reason the couplers don't like, the couplers on the boxcars don't like to stay connected if you do something erratic. Even if you don't do anything erratic they don't like to stay connected so So you notice the view uh, went out, went zoomed in a bit now. So we'll just do another quick check. The back of our train is still there. So now the engine is up to the 100%. Gonna zoom in again. It's going to eventually be under the other 0%. I'm pretty sure. Back to do a slight brake application now to bring it down. So you have to be down to 15 by the time we enter the yard. So I'm down to 35 now. I've gone ahead and I've released. We're going to keep going at that for right now. There's the other signal. So I want to go ahead and lower the speed to 15 if I want to play it properly by that signal. That means I need to increase those brakes now. The HUD will shortly zoom in again. Going to keep it on the back of our train for a second. Yep, we're still there. 302160 is indeed one of the ones we have to drop off, so there you go. Going to take the uh, throttle 
or the brakes rather back off now. We have zoomed in to the point that our engine is now under the end of the brakes indicator. I'm going to go ahead and maintain a little bit of a throttle application for right now just to make sure we uh, maintain some speed coming down there. I'm going to go ahead and just keep it around the 20 area right now. There's no need to do anything more than that. And as we approach that signal, we're going to go ahead and bring it down to 15. So I've been letting it come down naturally, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a small boost to get it down to as far as I need it to go. It should drop the last little bit on its own, I think, so we should be fine. Here we go. So flashing red. Diverting track, flashing red, telling us that we need, we're going to take the diverting track at no faster than 15 miles per hour, which coincidentally is what we're doing right now, so we're all right with that. We will now enter the yard. Those reds you see on the yard, by the way, are facing the other direction, so that's basically telling, telling anything in the yard, yeah, you're kind of screwed if you're here now. <laughs> We're going to continue along Oro Grand Siding at this point. I'm going to go ahead and just manage our speed in the 15 area and hope that we don't lose any of our, our remaining, uh, or hope that we don't lose any of our cars on the back, especially the eight that we need. I almost sped. I caught it. I almost sped. So I'm going to go as far up towards the signal as I can. Because I want to uh, leave a little room on the other side of the yard if I can. But the train looks like it will just barely fit inside the siding here. So it, we might have to leave the cars just at the very front of the siding, blocking entry for anyone else. It might be a train that someone will have to enter from the other direction to pick up. So I assume the cars are going in that direction somewhere. going to make sure the cars do all get into the siding. That is the major detail right now. Get all the cars into the siding. I'm going to come to a stop at the signal. So I'm lowering my speed just a little bit more now. All cars are in the side, so if something decides to detach now, we should still be good. I'm going to give a little bit of room at the back of the uh, train here to make sure we're a little further into the siding here. To stop when we have about 0, 0.00 left for the signal. So I'm going to add a little bit of speed to make sure we get to it. A little more. I'll just stop right there because I can see the green right there. We know we're good anyway. So let's get ready to attach some cars, shall we? So we're going to take uh, these, 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 these. These guys are all going to be left right here, and that's the end of that. Uncouple the rear eight freight cars, 301625 to 302160. Well... There's 301625. That should do the job, right? 
Delivery for Oral Grand is complete. Continue to Victorville Siding 6, which is your final destination. Roger. Off we go. So we have a slightly smaller train now. So we had our green for leaving here, which means that we should be good to go at this point. Train, the track was set for us. I'm going to go ahead and cut the throttle off for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and just scan ahead because we're about five miles from our final stop here at Victorville Siding 6. Let's check where Victorville Siding 6 is in terms of our entry. It is right here at this point right here. So we're going to go along that top yellow track along the bottom is the one that I'm looking at. If I want to enter that track, I have to enter it this way. And then we're going to have to get signaled onto this track somehow by coming along over to here. So it's going to be a little bit of a complex uh, entry, but we're eventually going to come in via this and that's going to do the job. So let's center back on us, shall we? We're going to gain speed again now that we're leaving the yard. So now that I've done my scan ahead, let's take the wipers off because the rain seems to have stopped again. So we're going to go ahead and pop ahead and look at the um, 15 here and then we're going get, to get back on the front of the cab and this time I will give you a chance to get some pictures. So we may have a lower speed limit on the uh, middle track there but I don't know if that was the case or if it's actually 55 the whole way. Nonetheless, we have to wait until the 55 crosses us unless we're told otherwise, and we are now told otherwise. The, uh, the track behind us has now basically signaled back to its old location, and now we are completely within the uh, 55 again. Well, no, it hasn't, but we'll take that assumption. It works for me. It works as an assumption, so we're good to go. And over the front of the cab. Get your pictures. Another side of any over there on the uh, left. Some kind of a working truck over there with some uh, pallets. I see something else coming up. That's our mile marker that says that we are at mile 31. There's the front of our train again. Oh, look at that. I didn't expect that. We get to go to the back of the train now. Look at that. We're at the back of the train. That's a different view. <laughs> That's a bit of a different view. Bring that back up and let's go. coming up, so we're going to immediately be slowing down again. Oh, electricity. Beautiful. Sit back in the cab. So I could have kept going up in speed for the time being, but I decided for right now we're just going to go ahead and cool it because uh, we don't want to risk speeding too much here. I think the rain is starting again. Are you serious? Wow, temperamental weather today. So we're coming up now on three and a quarter miles from our destination. The, signal, the uh, speed limit is a quarter of a mile away, so we're going to have about three miles to go out of 35 and then lower speed limit. I need to put that speed down quickly because I thought it was down by now. It wasn't. There we go. We're down now. Next signal is three quarters of a mile away. 
That will be about two and a quarter mile from our destination. The 45 means absolutely nothing because we're going to be shuttled off into the yard momentarily. And I have a funny feeling that we're going to have a flashing red ahead. Because we have a lot of yard to go through, just like we did at the start of the journey. Quick look outside. A yellow ahead so we're good to go at 35 for a while longer but that yellow does mean we're gonna have to get ready to move off I, I know it means technically that you should get ready to stop the signal but I think it's actually double yellow that's more that does that more but even that is a diversion track half the time so this is basically telling us from a speed restriction standpoint that you're gonna be going into your yard soon Next signal is three quarters of a mile away, and that is where our speed limit begins, right after it. So uh, we have a mile of driving in yard before we can stop. At 15 miles per hour, that means about a four minute drive, so uh, we're almost done. stationary. They're all stationary over there. I think I'm going to get down in time. Maybe a little early at this point. I'm going to be a little early at this point, so I'm going to take the uh, brakes off for a moment. I will be reapplying them. I'm just letting the speed come down naturally right now, but I'm going to have to give it a quick boost to get it down. So I'll do that very quickly right there. And it should get down, I think, in time now. There we go. We're good. There's no up, there's no downhill gradients. The gradient is actually uphill, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Our uh, switch is set for siding number six. That's exactly where we want to go. So about a mile and uh, ten, and we're going to be there. You can see the highway. I believe that is the interstate. Route 66 is over on our right at this time. We'll take a quick look over at it. There's another train over there waiting for us. Apparently, a coal freight. Not sure why it's waiting there. Let's go ahead and detach for a moment. I'll have to turn that off. Let's turn detach for a moment. Let's take a look up at the highway so we can get a nice little screenshot of the train here if possible. There's the interstate. Oops. How do you want to do this push? You want to go over here? That seems like a good way to do it. Let's get the speed back up to 15.
mind that for a second. There's your screenshot, guys. Take a picture. I am. That's that. Oh, I meant to actually go across. Oops. I meant to actually hit an arrow and go across if I hit the wrong key. We'll ignore that. Carry along. That was Victorville Science 6. We are going to finish there. Because I'm from the proper, I'm going to get the whole train into signing, and then we're going to call the day. And that will wrap up all the official scenarios on the standard tab for this DLC. And at that point, I just want to remind you that we only have four more scenarios that we have on this DLC at this time. Unless I find more to add, I may have to go and get the RV Jets scenarios because he has a nice series along here. Two, actually, a second one on the go right now. That will give us more to do along this route. But uh, right now i got four scenarios installed, two of which are, or sorry, five scenarios installed. Two of which are the career F7, or yeah, F7 scenarios. One of which is the SC70 Ace DLC. Uh, and then the two which are workshop scenarios that will go back to the train we've already seen. So we're going to get to see four trains on our next run of this route. And I'm going to see if I can delay that for a little while because I want, since I know it's going to be our last real run before we go into workshop scenarios en masse, I want to uh, go ahead and hold off on doing those two particular career scenarios, at least until we get the F7 introduced somewhere else. Then I'll, when I go to introduce the F7 somewhere else, I'll go ahead and I'll come back and do these, possibly before that, because this is the older model once again. So I'll figure out how I want to do that, and I'll, I'll let you know when the time comes. But it might be a little while before we come back to Kevin Passing. And just be ready to know that we might not be back here for a bit. Be prepared for that possibility. So I'm just letting the train ease in. I could, I'm gonna turn the wipers off now. There's no reason to keep on now. So I could um, just go ahead and speed up and get in or even stop right now if I want to. But like I said, I'm gonna be prim and proper. I'm just gonna go ahead and ease in gently. Unless I get to be going too slow, in which case I'll have to add a little more speed. And otherwise, just gonna coast to a stop here. There's no reason for me to do anything until I'm fully in the siding. So we're gonna go ahead and maintain our position for this time. Going eight miles per hour. By the information here, we're basically three tenths of a mile away from our so called stop. So we might actually be getting ourselves under that hand by the time we stop anyway. Let's actually keep this up for a moment and see how far along we go with the hand. We can't go beyond that hand, we just have to stop anywhere within the siding. And like I said, I'm getting perfect proper, I'm gonna get the train a little bit in the siding as we stop. Check the back of the train now. You see we're still coming into the siding here. Basically where that track juts off to the right is where the siding begins for us, right after that jut out. We're now a quarter of a mile from the point on the track. going six miles per hour. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little boost now. Why not? Let's just give it a little boost to speed this up. We're going to go through the hand right now. So literally I'm going to cross under us right now. So let's go ahead and turn the hand off. That little speed boost will ensure we get inside in a decent amount of time. And then I can come to a stop uh, not too far along here. Let's see where the siding begins for the back of the train here. Sign begins for the back of the train right about there, right now. So I can go a little bit further. When the yellow line gets around the exclamation point, that's where I'm going to go ahead and stop. When the yellow gets to the exclamation point, that's about halfway along at that point. I think that's a good place to stop in terms of the siding. speed on to speed this up for my sake because I want to be faster make me faster so we're getting close to the exclamation mark now I'm going to go ahead and start hitting the brakes now and that will bring the yellow to between the exclamation mark and the emergency stop indicator 
And that's probably a good place to stop on both sides, because if we turn around, you can see there's now some space here. And then back at the front, once again, there's some space there. So we're going to go ahead and brake there. I'm going to go ahead and apply brakes as I come to a stop. There we go, more brakes. That'll make sure the train doesn't move. And I'll turn the engine off. And we are good to call this a scenario. We're done. So let's look at the train one more time. There we go. So we're done here. All freight has been delivered. These will be sorted later. Well done. We're kind of moving around needlessly now, but we're done here. So uh, let's go ahead and get back to the map. And actually, I'm not even going to take you to the map because we're done here anyway. So I'm just going to say, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I know I've said that already, but I can't say that enough with the way YouTube is nowadays. Uh, and you pretty much have to do it if you want to grow nowadays. So uh, please, feel free to do that and uh, help me grow. And I will. Uh, I would like you, if you really want to support me, uh, however, not necessary, but always appreciated. You can always support me on Patreon. I will have a link to that in the description. And uh, I also have a Discord server. You can feel free to pop over to the Discord and say hi. That's in the description of every video as well. So make sure you do those things and I will would love to have this community grow around not just this train content, but also uh, other content. I may do some Worms Rumble, may do some truck simulators, may do some uh, weird other weird simulators like a tabletop simulator I might get I might if you any of you have tabletop simulator I might we want to play a game with you in there someday so we have all sorts of things we can do on this channel and uh, I definitely want to have fun that is the whole idea have fun and uh, share some good content and in the case of this game especially help you learn a little bit about the world so uh, come back next time I would love to have you for another wonderful drive where are we gonna go I'm thinking Portsmouth direct line but I could also change my mind and go back to South Wales Coastal. That was my original plan. I may even bring up the other half of the German route. I've already got the uh, Munich to Garmisch Partenkirchen, but I don't want to do the Garmisch Partenkirchen to Innsbruck yet. I want to go a couple more routes before I come back to that part of the uh, route because there is a merged route. I want to also do a long journey along someday, a full journey, and I want to see if I can get a full train uh, along there. The trick will be getting some proper trains on the route and I may not own the trains in question for that so that's the part I'm gonna have to eventually figure out uh, so that may have to wait until a later sale which would which would not be a bad idea because at that point I'm gonna be done with the other scenarios anyway so that, uh, so it will definitely be a later project if I do the longer route but I would love to see if I can get something on the longer route or even find out or even find out some information about the stations on the other on the first half of the route that I can just do a section on that first half of the route and get some other SBON activities in there so I'd love to figure out something along those parts of the route. But in the meantime, come back for more English routes next time because the UK routes are really where a lot of this game is at right now. A lot of the passenger snare traffic is what is really the most popular. And I want to see if I can introduce as many trains as I can in the UK. But we are going to come back to the US because that is the second most popular, I think, in the uh, countries represented in this game. Which makes sense because it's the second most number of routes, even more than German on Steam. Though you can find a lot of German and Austrian ones off Steam as well. Anyway... See you next time. I think I'm going to do Portsmouth Direct Line next time, but I may change my mind. Uh, see you for that. Have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for your part of the world. I'm Cyclone. Love to have you back. See you for uh, some more Train Simulator. Bye-bye.